Today I'm going to show you the most important tool when it comes to AI powered media enhancement. A tool that can completely transform your footage. So you will be able to turn this into this. And take this and turn it into this. Hey creators, I'm an AI generated avatar. Don't forget to follow my channels to stay updated with the latest AI breakthroughs. Let's explore the AI revolution together. We are now on the main page of Topaz Labs, as you can see here in the header and in the tabs. We have different solutions. They offer solutions not only for video upscaling but also for photography. And the so-called Gigapixel is also a solution for upscaling photos and various graphics, just like Photo AI. The only difference being the level of advancement and the range of available solutions. I think I will make a separate episode about this topic later, but for now, we will focus only on video upscaling. In my daily work in media production, for social media and media in general, this is the most important tool for me when it comes to delivering the highest quality content. Often, the material I generate using another AI or whatever footage I receive is not always of the best quality. Topaz Labs and this specific solution allow me to create something truly magical. In today's episode, I want to show you, in a nutshell, how you can start using this tool and why it's really worth it. Honestly, when I first started using it, it changed my perspective on what is possible and how easily I can handle crisis situations or just incorporate it into my routine. For example, I know that if I create a video using AI like Runway, I can later automatically put it into Topaz for additional enhancement and the results are really impressive. Later in this episode, I will also show you my workflow, how I transfer materials from different tools directly into Topaz Labs Video AI. Since there are different solutions, I will try to present them in a way that shows multiple approaches, what results you can get with each, and maybe even a more efficient way to do it. If you're interested in buying, you can do it directly from their official website, where you can also download everything. Basically, you just download the launcher, and from there, you can start experimenting with the tool itself. Today. I want to show you some examples of how to use it in the best way possible. Let's open a sample project. To get the best effect, I will start with something that is highly compressed because if we use high quality footage, the impact of the upscaling might not be as visible. So I will first show you an example where the difference is obvious. We select the file. In this case, I have prepared a low res video, meaning a low quality recording. We import it here and at this stage we can choose from presets right away. For example, convert to 60fps, auto stabilization and other features. An important point is that this software includes stabilization options, not just frame interpolation. So you can for example convert 30fps to 60fps or even lower it for slow motion. This is worth mentioning because it gives us full control over what we want to achieve. We can also change resolutions, upscale material and adjust it freely while maintaining high quality. I want to emphasize this because while other tools or plugins for Premiere Pro offer similar features, I haven't seen one that provides such stable and high quality results in a solid package. The output looks as if the footage was natively recorded in that resolution and that's the most important part. So let's get straight to the point. Here we select resolution. In my case, I will keep it original for now, 1280x720, but since we want to scale it up to meet the 4K standard, or at least full HD, I will change the output resolution to 4K. This will enhance the footage to 4K quality. Personally, I use this tool mainly for resolution enhancement and fixing video quality, but I don't rely much on stabilization, since AI-based video tools don't necessarily produce footage that requires it. Here, we select video type based on the input material. I have a progressive scan video and a quick tip, you can check this using Media Info, a small plugin that allows you to verify if your video is progressive or interlaced. You just load the clip, click Media Info and check the scan type. In my case, it says progressive. Now we have different AI models for upscaling. I won't go through all of them. You can test which one works best for you. For example, Themis is for noise reduction, while Artemis is my go-to model because it gives me the best results. I also enable split view to compare the before and after. Selecting Artemis, I zoom in to see more details and now we can start adjusting the sliders. There's an add grain option which helps maintain natural looking footage. Sometimes AI enhancement can make a video look too clean, so adding a bit of grain keeps it looking realistic. Another slider is recovery detail which helps bring back lost details from a blurred video. If a clip is slightly blurry, this setting can restore depth and sharpness without issues. There's also focus fix which adjusts the focus of the image, but since our video is already properly focused, we won't use it here. 
Additionally, you can manually add grain for a more cinematic look. I personally like using this for stylistic reasons, but it's optional. Then we select the quality of our input video, low, medium or high. In my case I go with medium because it's not the worst quality, but still needs improvement. Moving on, we have the frame rate settings, whether to increase it or not. AI handles this very well, and I'll show an example later. For now I'll keep it at 30fps, but normally I just set it to 60fps, and it works great. Next there's stabilization. I haven't experimented much with it, but from YouTube examples it seems to work well. Finally we have motion de blur, which helps reduce motion blur from moving objects. If your footage has a lot of motion blur, this can sharpen it significantly. Now let's test how this tool actually works. I set Artemis as the model, upscale to 4K, and let's see the results. There's a render 1 second preview button, which generates a quick comparison. Here you can immediately see the before and after. While you can't check the motion smoothness yet, from my experience, it has always worked well. Looking at the output, the video is definitely sharper, maybe even a bit too sharp, so we can adjust it slightly. While editing this video, I came across a new mode in Topaz Video AI called Starlight. It's designed to enhance old low-res or degraded footage, bringing it up to HD quality using cloud-based processing. I'm going to test it out and show you the results. At the end of this video, I wanted to show you how Topaz Labs helps me enhance my AI-generated content and refine my videos. For this example, we'll use Runway, so let's get straight to it. Here, we've already imported the source image. To keep it simple, I generated this without any additional prompts, just to add some motion. Now we wait for the video generation to finish, instead of upscaling directly in Runway, which is an option. I prefer to download the clip to my computer first. Once it's downloaded, I open the selected clip and start editing. The models I usually work with in Topaz Labs are Rhea, Artemis or Gaia, and I switch between them depending on the project. For this example, I'll use Rhea. Let's set the upscale factor to 4x for a more detailed result. I'll also add some noise and grain, then adjust the frame rate to 60fps. This feature is especially useful for AI-generated clips, as many of them are rendered in slow motion, making this setting essential for smoother motion. I highly recommend using it. In this case, I'll go with Rhea XL. Now we hit render, and in a moment, we'll see the final result. And now, as you can see, the final result is here. The upscaled and enhanced footage is on the right, and the difference is noticeable, especially when zoomed in. After rendering, the improvement is even more visible. On the left, the original footage loses resolution, while on the right, we have a sharper, more detailed image. Now let's take a final look at the before and after comparison in motion.